Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I'm playing around in my art journal. Now, this art journal page is all about the one word that I chose for this year. And if you were looking closely, you might have noticed there were a lot more, there was a lot more than one word on this page, and that is extremely true. There is more than one word, and I explain why that's the case later in the video. Now in here, you will see how I do some speedy stenciling so that making these letters didn't take very long at all. And then also to, well, anyway, it's all waiting for you. Just watch the video. I'm gonna be spelling a bunch of words here, but I'm not sure exactly which words, and I'm not sure which letters I need yet. So that's why I'm gonna make a whole bunch of them. I've got my Alpha Jumble stencil here that I created for over at Stencil Girl Products. And by using a foam roller, I can stencil a whole bunch of this stuff quickly. You see, I just did the entire alphabet there. And now I'm gonna put a little more paint out and I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna get the alphabet again. I'm gonna fill probably about 15 or 20 pages of this because whenever I use the foam roller, it's a lot of paint that gets in there and it's a bunch of cleanup. So if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna get a whole bunch of it done at once, and the letters that I don't use this time will be saved for some other project. It doesn't take long for it to dry, and then it's ready to cut out. I'm gonna cut out the individual letters that I need for the different words that I wanna use. One of the perks of using stencils to do this is you don't have any limitations, meaning you can have as many letters as you want, you can spell as many words as you want, and if it ever happens that you're missing a letter, you're short just that S or that T, all you have to do is stencil it again. Can you tell I've been scarred by stickers and that kind of thing when you just don't quite have all the letters you need to spell something? Plus, when you use a stencil to do it, you also end up with these great scraps and bits that are awesome collage elements to add in here and there to things like art journal pages, ATC cards, all that kind of stuff. So you've got the idea of how it goes to cut letters out, make those words. So I went through and did that for a whole bunch of them. Now I'm putting them here on a blank art journal page, not because they're gonna go on this page, but because I'm gonna be coloring them with some spray. And rather than wasting any of that gorgeous color, it's gonna end up creating a future background for this art journal page. Now the stuff that I'm using is called Art Spray. It's by Marabou. And the thing that I really love about this stuff is that it's permanent when it's dry. So that means if, I gets, if it gets wet, it's not gonna reactivate, the color's not gonna run or blend or that kind of bleed. It'll blend if it's wet, but once it's dry, it's dry and it's not gonna move around. Now you might notice that I'm spraying gingerly, that I'm doing this carefully, and that is true. Because if I'm a little too close to it, if I'm a little too enthusiastic, what happens will happen, what happen to that T right there, it's gonna happen to all of them meaning it's gonna move. So that's why I was just holding it way up and spraying gently and putting a bunch of layers on there. That way they don't end up flying around and moving off the paper. And if you wanna see how I clean my nozzles to keep things from clogging, I have the video linked down below for you. Then the next thing, this is the hard part for me, is to let them dry. So wait, where did this background come from? When did I do that? Well, I did it some time ago, who knows when. I have all sorts of started backgrounds in my journals. And when I'm working on something and I need a background, a lot of times I just flip through my journal and see which one calls to me. In this case, it was this stenciled spray inked background that I had, I thought would be perfect with these words. By the way, once I took all the letters off of here and put them onto that art journal page, this is what was left behind. All of this fun pattern, this color, this is the start of another art journal page. Now, I don't know what I'm gonna put on it or when I'm gonna put it on it. It's gonna be in my art journal waiting for me until I'm ready to use it. But this way, not a single drop of my art supplies have to be wasted. It didn't take long before I realized I wanted more color on here than just the blue and the black and the white. So I brought in some yellow here. And what I'm using is some Aqua Inks from Marabou. It's a liquid watercolor. So if I put it on straight from the bottle, I get more color. And if I add a little bit of water to it, it softens it down a little bit. So I get to control how much color I want on there. So yellow was basically the gateway to the rainbow for me today, because after I added that, how can I not add some more? So after the yellow, I decided it was time to bring in a little bit of orange. I was explaining the concept of choosing a word for a year and how it worked and what it meant and that kind of thing. And it seemed to make sense to my husband. He, he agreed, he's like, okay, so one word that kind of guides you, it's, it's your anchor throughout the year. I said, yeah, that's it. 
And so when he came down and saw me working on this art journal spread, he was a little confused because I said a word for the year. Not lots of words for the year, but one. And he was right that there was definitely more than one word that was going to be on this page. And that didn't surprise him too much because he knows for the most part, I'm not a real big fan of rules or musts or shoulds, that kind of thing. And so the fact that I had more than one word for my year when it was supposed to be one word was not a shocker to him. But the thing is about it is I'm going to pick one word that ties in with every other word that I've picked, that it's kind of like the umbrella word and then all the other ones that go under it. And if you're thinking, hey, she's getting by on a technicality here, choosing more than one word, you're probably right. But guess what? It's not like there are a lot of rules to this. We can do it however we want. So how do you come up with your word for the year? How do you narrow it down? How do you see which one calls to you? Well, one of the things I love to do is look through lists of words. And the list that was most helpful to me this year was the one from inside my Facebook group. I asked everybody what words were calling to them for this year, and we created a giant list of them. And you can also see why some of the people chose that word. That was also extremely inspiring for me. If you're on Facebook and you like groups where people are supportive and kind, where people are sharing what they're creating and they're sharing their thoughts and ideas, because it's a great place if you've got a question to find an answer, then check out the free group called Rediscovering Your Creativity over on Facebook. And yep, I'll have a link down below for you. Now that I've gotten rid of all that white space and added some color, it's time to get the words put back on here. Now, if I was a wise person, I would have stacked them neatly and made it so that I could very quickly move these words over. But, well, I'm just not thinking that carefully about this. So I'm just simply getting them back on here. Probably not in the exact same place that they were before. And guess what? I don't think that's going to be a big deal. But what is a big deal to me is actually making sure that I can spell the words. And I'm looking for a lost letter. And then I realized, oh, wait, that's not even the word. That's why the letters weren't there. That wasn't the word. Now, the word that I'm putting on here in white, that's my umbrella word, the big word that actually everything else has something to do with. But adventure is my one for this year, and then all these others are going to support it. Now, I thought white would really make it stand out, and it does, but not in the way that I want. So I'm going to have to color that. I'm going to add some green onto each one of the letters. I could have gotten out the art spray, but I figured, eh, just for a few letters here, I'll just use the aqua ink, the watercolor ink, and just color each one. And you'll notice that I've turned it over to another blank page in my journal, and this way, any of the ink that goes over the letters is not being wasted. It's building a layer, a start of a background for a future art journal page. Everything you've seen so far is stuff that I've had fun doing, that I thought was an absolute joy to make, from stenciling to adding the color, but there's something left for me to do that I'm not really totally looking forward to, and that's gluing all this stuff on. Perhaps you're wondering why I chose glue stick instead of gel medium to do this. Well, it's because the glue stick was right there, and it works just fine, so that's why I'm using it but I easily could have used something like gel medium to do this too. It's not like there are rights or wrongs with this. It's art journaling. Now, over the next year, I know I'm in for an adventure because there are some things on the horizon that, well, there are going to be some challenges to it, but good challenges, exciting kinds of challenges. And also too, now that I've hit a different age, I passed one of those milestone birthdays and it's like, oh, things look a little different on the other side of it. So I get to kind of look at things in a whole new way. And that's what I'm journaling about underneath each word. It looks like scribbling, but it's really not. I'm thinking words and I'm writing what feels like real words. Although if you can't read them, don't worry, neither can I. It's a scribble journaling way to get feelings out onto the art journal page without having to focus on being precise about your spelling, which frankly is tough for me. And I'm surprised I haven't found a typo yet in the words that are on here. Maybe it's there and I just haven't seen it yet because my spelling, how shall we say, is not the best. Well, thanks so much for being a part of today's play. And if you've been enjoying this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. 
And if you want to see more of my videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I've got a new one out. And yep, you bet there's more stuff for you over on the website at acolorfuljourney.com, like my free workshop called Permission to Play. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.